Hey guys, it's Holly. Um, I hope you don't mind that I'm filming on my laptop today rather than my regular camera, but it was just giving me trouble and I just wanted to get this video up, so sorry about that. This is something that I get asked all the time. I get a ton of emails about this and um, people will message me on Etsy and everything and they'll say, I watched your video on um, how to, I think it was like how to increase traffic on Etsy or something like that, how to, you know, get people's attention on Etsy. I did that video a while back um, and they'll say, I'm doing everything that you said and I'm still, I'm just not getting any sales. Like what am I doing wrong? And there could be a number of reasons for that, but I'm gonna cover some of probably the most common reasons why you're not getting sales in your Etsy shop. Kind of like the overarching theme, I think, to all of these tips is gonna be your shop needs to look professional. Like take a look at some of your favorite online shops and see what they're doing that you're not doing. That what they're doing in terms of like their logo and their pictures and everything like that um, and see what you could be doing differently and how you could improve. Onto the kind of like common mistakes. So. The first thing is um, you might not have enough items in general. So if you only have like one item in your shop, people probably aren't gonna take you seriously. Now, that being said, you don't need to have like 10 pages of items, but like a good pay a good full page or two um, at the least will make you look a lot more professional. Second thing is you might not have enough reviews. And um, I know probably what you're thinking is like, well, it's like an endless cycle, you know, I don't have reviews because I don't have sales, but I don't, but now you're saying I don't have sales because I don't have reviews. And I know what you mean, that's frustrating, but eventually you will get a sale. And it's just very important to make sure that every sale you get, that that person will leave you some positive feedback. There are a few ways of doing that. I mean, in the beginning, when you don't have a lot of sales, go above and beyond to give your customer like that personal experience. Maybe even include like an extra tag in their um, in their order, an extra card. I mean, that says you know we really would appreciate your feedback. We're getting started, and we would really love if you could leave us a positive review. Um, I would do that, and I would also um, maybe leave like a handwritten note. Thank you so much for your order. You could even send them a direct message on Etsy and ask that they leave you feedback because I think most of the time people just don't think to leave feedback. Uh, unless they're like reminded to. And unfortunately, a lot of times the way that it works is people leave feedback if they've had a negative experience. So you wanna make sure you reach out to the customers who had a positive experience and who just aren't thinking to leave feedback and make sure that you get their feedback. Their problem could be you have a lot of negative feedback. <laughs> so if you if you've found yourself getting a lot of negative feedback, you need to really take a look at what you're doing and why you're getting that feedback. Maybe you need to improve on the quality of your items. Um, I think a good like rule of thumb is to under promise and over deliver promise the like minimum so that you know that you can do so if you think you can get orders out in three days say that you get orders out in five days and then that way when they receive their order in three days they say oh what a nice surprise you know if you over promise and under deliver there you go, you're gonna have some negative feedback because they expected more than what they got. You get negative feedback that kind of like that you think is unwarranted. Like you're always gonna have people who um, maybe didn't read the listing clearly or maybe they're just kind of nasty and they just enjoy leaving harsh feedback, I don't know. Um, you're, you're, gonna you're gonna run into that even if you're doing a really great job. You know, so to deal with that, you might leave Etsy, it lets you post like a public response and you can, I've done that before where a customer was like, oh, this mug wasn't as big as I thought it would be or something. And I'll just say like, thank you for your feedback. Like be very professional. Don't, <laughs> don't get nasty. Like you idiot, you didn't read what it says. <laughs> um, just, <laughs> just be like, thank you for your feedback. Uh, the item is this size as as noted in the listing or something like that. And that way people who are just browsing your reviews go, oh, so this wasn't really something that she was hiding or, or lying about. It was just the customer just didn't see it. You know, that's, that's just like an example. But this one this is kind of like a harsh one. But another reason why you might not be getting sales is because your products just aren't good. They're not something that is um, popular right now or 
there's something that is really outdated or that no one's into. No one is into your product, you're not going to get any sales. I know I'm stating the obvious, but um, maybe take a look at what you're selling and go like, is this something that there's even a market for? And, and just be really honest with yourself about that. And maybe you just kind of like tweak what you're doing and bring it more into what's popular now. Oh, another thing, which is, this is, blah, 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 blah. this is something that I mentioned in my last video, pictures. I mean, your product photos on your website are all you have when you have an online shop. Like, that's how people are making their decision. It's like, ooh, you know, what, what did their eye, what was their eye drawn to when they were seeing these pages and pages of listings? So you have to have good pictures. There is no way around this. Do not post pictures that are blurry, dark unrepresentative of your product, just don't do it. They, they should look good. And I, I've given tips in the past of how to do this really cheap with an iPhone or any, you know, camera on your, on a cell phone. In general, just like light, bright, um, styled if you can. Like if you, if you can put like something in the picture to make it really pretty, maybe some like flowers or like other pretty accessories around it, but you just want your pictures to stand out. And I think if you go on Etsy, or, um, for any amount of time, you'll see what I mean. Like there's, there are just some listings that stand out and some that you don't even pay attention to. And the ones that you don't pay attention to are usually like dark, blurry, not pretty. They just look really crappy. Another reason you might not be getting sales is maybe you're not promoting your items enough. Like maybe you don't have any social media sites. I've, I've talked about this before, but you should at least be on like something, you know, <laughs> you don't have to have everything, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, blah, blah, but um, you should have like some type of social media so that, pe so that you can gain a following and when you make something new, you can put that out there to all your followers and go like, hey, this is new, check this out. If you're not doing that and you're just, you just have a shop and you don't really ever talk about it or promote it, then people aren't going to find you. I would say another reason would be that your, your brand isn't cohesive. And I've talked about this before. I know I've promised you guys a like a branding video. I just haven't had a chance to do it yet. Your brand should make sense. Like I've gone to some shops where, and usually it's shops that are not even, they don't even have original ideas. They're like copying off of people. And this is probably the reason for this, but they're selling a whole bunch of things that don't go together and they don't make any sense. And you know, you should be able to go to a shop and go like, oh, this is I'm part of like the target market here. Like I get this shop, I like this shop, or I don't. And some shops just like everything is random. There's no, there's no cohesive look to the stuff. There's no cohesive um, target market. It's just all over the place. And if you're, if you're all over the place, that could be the problem. You need to have a specific um, cohesive brand. And I promise I will make a video on that soon. Another reason you might not be getting sales this is obvious is maybe your stuff is overpriced or it's just not at a price where people feel like comfortable spending that. So you might want to take a look at, hi Chester, <laughs> hi, take a look at people who are selling similar items and what they're charging and see if you can get your costs down. That's obvious, but people just aren't going to buy something that they think is too expensive. Um, another thing is if you take forever to ship, uh, that's a big thing for people online is shipping you have to try to keep your shipping prices as low as you can and um, as fast, get it, get it to them as fast as you can. Sometimes it's kind of out of your control. Like if the postal service is, they sometimes they lose stuff and that just happens and there's nothing you can really do about that. But try to ship out orders as quickly as you can and at least get them in the mail so that they know that they're on their way to them. And that's another, that's again, under promise and over deliver in terms of your shipping times. I think that this is true in everything anymore, but especially on Etsy, um, customize your about page, get put pictures of yourself on there so that they put a face to the brand. And um, you know, on Etsy, that's really important. Like people wanna know who they're buying from. It's a handmade market uh, for the most part. So like they want to know who it is that they're buying from, where, where they live, like, um, you know, and there's a whole about section. A lot of people don't take the time to customize that. And I think that it's definitely worth it because if someone is taking the time to buy on Etsy, they want to know as much as they can about you and your process and uh, all of that stuff. So take the time to customize your about page and, um, and blog and it just basically like 
make your brand personal. I also think like, I don't really know what to call this, but if your shop just looks like you haven't been on it in forever, <laughs> like if you don't um, keep things updated in your uh, announcement box at the top of your page, like if it says stuff that is completely irrelevant or like if you're talking about a Valentine's Day sale and it's it's Christmas time <laughs> or something, you know, that would be really bad. But um, you should just, just kind of like keep it fresh and updated so when people go they realize that like things are happening and it's it's keeping kept up I think I would call this one come here um being misleading about about your items so I've seen like I sell gold foil prints in my shop and they're actual metallic gold foil but I have seen um shops that sell like it's just flat printed to look like it's gold foil and they call it gold foil and then their customers get the items and they're like, this isn't at all what I thought it was going to be. And they're really upset. So don't be misleading. Like just because something's trending, don't try and, and basically lie and say that like you're, you're selling something that you're not. Just be honest. Um, yeah, just be honest. Oh, this is kind of funny because I know earlier I said maybe your prices are too high. I think also if your prices are too low, that's a problem. Because people are going to go like, oh, what's wrong with this? If <laughs> like, why, why is everyone else selling this for so much? And theirs is so cheap. I don't trust it. It must be, you know, crappy. So you just, you want to have prices that kind of like represent the market more or less. Uh, I think that's really important. Oh, something that'll definitely prevent you from getting sales is not offering international shipping. That's something that is huge. And in the beginning, I didn't offer international shipping. And once I started, um, I got so many more sales. So make sure you're offering international shipping and it costs more, but like the people are willing to pay for it because um, typically like international customers are used to buying stuff in the US and they're used to paying more for shipping. So just charge what it costs to ship it and don't worry about it. I'm petting Chester, that's what's happening here in case you're wondering like what I'm doing. Another thing I would mention is just have overall, just have good customer service. If someone messages you, try to get back to them within 24 hours or quicker if you can, you know, um, don't like leave people hanging it's all kind of obvious. Um, make sure you don't have a lot of like grammar mistakes in your listings. Just, just make your shop look like a big time store. Even though it's just an Etsy shop, don't think of it as just an Etsy shop. Don't think that that means your shop can just look like you're not putting any effort into it. Uh, it's going to be hard work. Like some people will ask me, I need to make this amount of money. I need, like, I need to make sure that my Etsy shop brings in this amount of money and everything. And um, it's it's possible to make a good living on Etsy. Like, it really is. But you need to do all of these things that I've talked about. And there are other there are other um, resources online too of like tips of how to improve your Etsy shop and everything. But I think a lot of it is just putting the work in, seeing like what other popular shops are doing that you're not and um yeah and just kind of make sure again under promise over deliver remember that that's really that's really huge and if you're brand brand new and you just haven't gotten a first sale do all of these things that i'm talking about improve your pictures check your prices that they make sense um do all of that and eventually you will get a sale and when you get a sale make sure that person leaves a good review so I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope this answered some of your questions that a lot of you have had that you've emailed me about. Um, if you still have more questions related related to Etsy and um, getting sales and stuff like that, just leave me a comment. Please subscribe to these videos if you haven't yet, and I will see you in my next video.